Uh, I, either way, so I feel like a lot of the information is presented in a way that you kind of have experience with it. Because I've read up on it and I still felt confused. Did you guys feel that as well? And when they talked about the Paragon, which is a rather complex system, and they just speed through it so fast, for me it was really hard to follow. Maybe it's because I'm tired? I don't know. Do you guys did not feel that way? I mean, the stuff they talked about was kind of easy to understand, but like, the, there was a few questions for me that felt kind of annoying to me. Such as, you know, when they talked about the boards, I haven't grasped that, like, when you start at a starting point, you have a board, and then you can spec by spending Paragon points, then go into another board. And these boards are different. What dictates what the next board will look like? Are they locked for all classes? That's how the next board looks like? Or you find them somehow? Or what, what's, the pro what's the process there? Oh, Don made made an explanation. I have to talk to him because uh, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be pushing on launch with Don the Crown and uh, two other streamers actually. That's a preliminary plan at least. They were random earlier, based of type of gameplay like Source or Fireboard, Freezeboard. Okay. Imagine that once you reach a gate, you get a choice between one of the three boards to add. Okay, okay, thanks, Genesee. So I think that most of that has more to do for me that I, I just lack the fundamental base knowledge that I might have, should have done before going through it. Because that was confusing for me, at least. But again, I, I do like reading up on things. I haven't done a deep dive on it yet, which I should do, obviously, um, to some of the endgame stuffs. Uh, slightly occupied with PoE, let's just say that. Either way, so one of the biggest problems I've had with, with not just this one, but anytime they talk about fixing things, uh, has been they present a problem and that they they present a problem and then they provide a solution and the problem I have with it is they they say let's talk positive music they they present a the problem saying hey you have a disease or the the game has a disease we're going to cure it by putting a band-aid on you now, when was the last time a Band-Aid cured a disease? That's how I feel. They just make it look good, better, but the, the problem isn't solved. That's how I feel with the backtrack and stuff like that. But then again, Riker said that he felt it was better, and I, I'll be honest, I, I take Riker's word for it. I really do. Better doesn't mean fixed. No, that's true, but an improvement's still there. Anyway, so the notes I made was, is pretty straightforward. So, so the capstone, I got a pretty good description of what that, what that was, at least, with how they uh, allow access to the next difficulty tier, and then difficulty options. This is something I wanted to tackle a little bit. So let's just uh, do this and take one step at a time here. Um, so in here, they have difficulty options, good or bad. And when I talk about, when they mentioned this, it was like... Um, the world just like you you can choose between running the harder version in the beta what was the what were they called adventure mode or something right so there was a easy mode and a hard mode and hard mode was supposed to be a bit more rewarding but everything was harder and based off everything that everyone i've talked to and what we've seen and videos and whatnot not not the world tier the game difficulty just the start there well we're going to talk about the world tiers as well because to my understanding you cleared so much faster in the easier game difficulty that we go into this endless uh, MF discussion in the Path of Exile with the with like the di the difference between having a super juiced up item quantity item rarity but slow clear speed versus having a little bit lower of those stats but you clear super fast so you roll the, you basically spin the RNG wheel faster or more times per minute uh, and that's basically how that game difficulty felt to me because every everything that I've seen makes the harder difficulty completely irrelevant. It, like it's a stupid choice to do it. You'll level faster, you drop more items, you just progress faster, everything in the in the easier difficulty. So why would... You're not incentivized to play, or at least not incentivized enough to play the harder difficulty, um, in my opinion. Um, but then they had this uh, difficulty options um, for the, the world tiers, right? And how they're gated behind the world tiers. I like that, that the, there's like there's like a gear check like you shouldn't be doing this next tier unless you're able to complete this capstone i am confident that people will carry others in capstones that's probably gonna fucking happen but i like the idea of implementing a i, I don't I, I, let's, let's just call it what it is a gear check 
gear character check is your character able to handle this next world tier you gotta handle this dungeon i like that idea i think that's pretty cool person at least um and then they tackle the idea of harder difficulties um not just being more hp and uh, and a uh, damage now i like the sound of it it was great i was sitting there listening to it and being like yo this is so cool okay great it's not just hp and damage because we've had that from path of exile multiple times over and it's never a good solution even Riker was like yeah it was more than that it felt more aggressive and what that i want details i'm the, i'm a numbers kind of guy like i want to see the numbers what do they do like, is it gauntlet mods? Like, they get extra projectiles or, you know, aggro range, whatever. You want to know what exactly is harder and not just, this is harder. And it's not just damage and HP. I, I, like, I want details, but maybe maybe I'm just um, too much of a PUE brain act uh, like going on here. They, they mentioned it. I didn't feel like I got enough details. I just felt like they had a little bit other abilities. That's it. Uh, and yeah, they say that they had projectiles homing and whatnot, but that's not... That, that was just a brief mention of it. But there's no description when you're going into higher difficulty. That was a couple of sim, uh, small comments. But there's more than just a couple of world tiers. There's quite a few of them, right? There's four, right? I would have preferred to see more information. On it. But that, that's my personal take. And I, I know I'm very biased when it comes to information. I love to hear details on these things. Uh, anyways, uh, can't I move this if I do? Oh, there we go. I can do this. Um... So next up is the sacred items. This was confusing to me. Again, maybe based off the fact that I don't have uh, that much information that I should have read up on earlier. Um, so the sacred items there that you can drop had... They, they were saying that they, they, they were dropped at the level that you were, but the power of it was rolled between 50 and 70 or something. I didn't really fully understand that. And it, it, the stats, are we talking about numerical values or like, I didn't really understand what the actual difference between them were outside of a, the numerical value, that dynamic value as in an RNG role, like getting a perfect unique in PoE. Like, can anyone help me understand that? You know, you're a PD anymore with the numbers there and things like that because they're rating and chance to create the gun, yeah. Have better roles. So is it similar to what I remember from the uh, couple of weeks I played Diablo 3? where the better items uh, has the uh, same numerical uh, span with, that it can roll, but the span is in a higher tier. So the better the level, the the higher those numerical rolls can roll. Because that would make sense, and it's directly taken from the D3 uh, era, right? Because that, that, that's how I understood it. They roll the level you are, but gated beyond world tiers. Okay. Um... That made it, that made more sense, but they didn't really confirm that, did they? Unless I was just a half-ass listening. Saying times have more tears. Okay, okay, okay. That, that that's a really good way to describe it. Thank you, thank you. That's a really good way to describe it. Appreciate. It. Thank you. Uh, what else did they talk about? They talked about Helltide. Uh, so Helltide was the way they portrayed it was really cool, and it sounds dope. Assuming it works as they portrayed it. Because to my understanding, it was like a time-based event that you could randomly stumble upon or happen as you're playing. And suddenly, you have a set time of engaging or farming certain uh, currency to open caches or whatever it was, right? And you would then have to find the cache for the specific item that you can, might, might want from those events, like... Shaco from Helmets, for example. I like the idea of that because I'm a big fan and advocate for target farming things. So stuff like that is very enjoyable because ARPG games needs to have a way to distract you from the fact that you're doing the same thing over and over again. And target farming stuff makes that happen simply because you're looking at, oh, I got to get those and I'm going to find that. And the fact that you're just killing monsters on your way to do these things is suddenly forgotten and your focus is the objective and you're forgetting that you're doing the same thing over and over again. And that, that, those are really good ways to make a game like this enjoyable even for the sake of longevity. But the, the problem I, I see with it uh, was, or not the problem I see, but a concern that I might have, uh, or that I have in this situation is that to my understanding, the Helltide, the Helltide is PvP as well. 
I thought that was something. Uh, no, that was not PvP. That was something else. Um, so the to my understanding, this is random. But it, I was also under the impression because he said, oh, I can do this in an hour again. Is this like an hourly event? And Riker said when he played that today that he got into an area, said he had a 23 minutes left on the clock. So they're pretty extensive time investments to these things because they've already designed these side dungeons to be like two minute speed dungeon versus a five minute speed dungeon. And suddenly we're talking about a big ass event where he says he has 23 minutes left on the clock, which... It's kind of weird to me because they, they've done so many decisions that is so casual, friendly, and speedy that suddenly there's a big-ass area that has a timer for 20 to 30 minutes or even longer. I don't know. In PvP area, PvP, yeah. Change the area every hour, from what I understand. Oh, okay. So the area where it spawns is, is uh, on an hourly basis. It might not be in the same area that you're in. Okay, that makes sense. Makes a decision for me saying it is getting to that chest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like the idea. Uh, another thing that that they had there was that you farm these cinders, I believe it was, right? Uh, to open these caches, right? And I don't I don't notice in chat you guys, mo some of you guys were not happy with this. I'll ask again. So they described it to this that the longer you stay and the harder the enemies get, uh, there's a higher risk that eventually the enemies will be too hard for your character to handle, upon which you might actually die. And you'll, you'll have to take this risk decision whether or not you want to stay for a longer time or not uh, to get more items, right? But if you die, you lose half your cinders. Now, I personally like playing hardcore in games like this or in ARPGs. I do. The reason I'm playing softcore in PoE is because I focus so much on my build guides these days. Uh, that is easier for me to do in software. And I find a lot of joy in that as well. But having a reward, a risk and reward structure, in my opinion, is fundamental to making the task at hand enjoyable. Because if you don't lose anything, it will just be a tedious grind. That's my personal opinion on that. But what do you guys think? Do you guys think that it is good that there's a risk and reward with these things? Or would you rather not lose anything? You can just go ham and if you die, it doesn't matter. Just go till your character dies and then just loot cash. Because that to me sounds stupid. In health that if you die, you lose all your coins or all your coins even. Sorry. As far as you die, to be more careful or team up. There's always a problem. I'm going to mention that as well. There's always a problem when there's a risk involved where it, you'll be incentivized to do the meta. And the meta might be a certain character build to do such things or it might be teaming up in a certain way and stuff like that. There will always be a meta shaped up from it. I just, I, I don't really care about the metas. I'm talking about the general enjoyment you get out of playing the game. To me, feels better if there's a risk involved when it comes to the high-end content. Otherwise, it's just going to be a tedious fucking grind. If I want the tedious grind, I can play Tibia. That game has no level cap. The highest level character in the world has played the game for many years, and it's like level 2.5 thousand. It will never end. If I want the tedious grind, I'll go do that. I'd rather have task at hand that I can go for and feel... I want to get a dopamine kick for managing to collect X amount of these uh, coins and opening up uh, something big and, and, you know, getting the reward for it. And be like, yeah, I succeeded in that and I survived. That's a good feeling rather than, uh, yeah, I couldn't handle it because I started getting one shot, but I managed to reach the chest and open it before getting one shot. So now I can loot it and die 50 times. You know, I, I don't know. That's just not fun to me. Uh, with yeah, TBA, I don't know what the highest level is uh, in the city these days. Uh, I played a couple years ago with this, with the stream, actually. Uh, five years ago, I think. I actually streamed it. It was fun. Um, anyways, um, I think it's good to have a risk reward. Obviously, there's always problems with those things. You kill mobs and do events. Yeah, yeah no, I, I understand that you have to do that. I'm, I'm just saying that you reach a point where you can't kill anything anymore and then open a chest. But now that there's a risk of you losing the coins if you die, I think is a good thing. I also think that it's kind of awkward. Or maybe not awkward. I like it just get, because it provides the game with um, a, let's for the sake of, uh, with the lack of a better word, let's call it pseudo aspirational content. And I think stuff like that is important because the game has proven or shown several times over of how casual friendly the game is. And I think that having the game being casual friendly is a good thing. But there also needs to be something to strive towards. 
even for the casual players. To reference that towards, sorry, to casual to Path of Exile, for example, where our community has the you know roots in, um, casual players who play the game for a long time, they will eventually set up goals, or some some people will eventually set up goals, being like, hey, this this season or this league, I'm gonna kill Ma uh, Maven, or I'm gonna kill Ubrel. I want to try Cirrus. That's something I want to strive towards. There is aspirational content to achieve. If these things don't exist, where there's no more fun and there's no more, there's no content for the high end as well, right? And if the high end has nothing to do, because like, there's a lot of other factors to play in role here, but I like having aspirational content as someone who does this for a fucking living, obviously, but I think a lot of gamers feels that way, but that doesn't necessarily have to be detrimental to the casual players either. Most of the government people here. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Highest level is 2.1k. Oh, shit. All right. Um, after years of game. Yeah, I, I'm just using it as an example, just to provide a description of my point, if you will. Uh, then we had the next point was harder content with revive limitations. This is similar to the risk and reward they had with the health tide they talked about. So the revive limitations uh, to provide some sort of aspirational content to overcome rather than a gear check dungeon. So the capstone to unlock the next world tier was, to, to me, it sounded like this is a gear check and an encounter. I'm done with everything in this area. I believe I'm ready for the next world tier. To be able to access that, I have to clear the capstone to unlock it. That is the game's way of basically telling you that you shouldn't do this unless you can do that. If you're able to clear that capstone, by all means, you're open to do the next world tier. Great. Everyone's happy. I think it's a great way to provide ca very casual players with a, with a goal to reach where they'd be like, hey, I think I'm ready for the next step. They try to the capstone, they die. I'm like, okay, maybe I'm not ready. Maybe I need to, you know, fucking read a guide or get better gear, whatever, right? Um, but it's, they seem to have similar to these harder dungeons where there's a revival limitation. So if your character, if you die 24-7, you're eventually going to lose your access to that, that dungeon and uh, have to go back to the drawing board, fix your character, and then go back in, right? I think this is good because, again, it provides this sense of uh, risk and reward rather than, rather than just a general gear check where it's like, oh, but I'll just go in because these things are like, actual things you have to invest your uh, invest to, to these dungeons, right? And I like that personally. Revive is like a portals in PoE, but I have a difference if a player arrests me, uh, you don't lose a revive. Yes, it's it's very similar to how portals work in PoE, absolutely. You have six portals in PoE. If you can't handle it, you're fucked. It means you're not ready for that map, right? I, I think it's a really good thing to do. I, I, don't, I don't think people should complain about that. Because uh, I saw some people in chat complaining about it when they mentioned it. I think it's a good thing, personally. Everyone complained that D3 was too easy, and now people are complaining D4 is too hard. Like, really? Is it PoE? No, but it's way better than D3. <sighs> okay, so uh, I want to mention a, uh, one thing, but before I say that, I do want to point out that someone in chat earlier said that this game is going to flop. I'm calling it right now. Diablo 4 is going to be insanely fucking successful. Insanely successful. And the reason for that is that there are three major categories of player bases that this game is attracting. MMO uh, category, the MMO ARPG category, and the ARPG category. I'm confident that this game is never going to cater to the hardcore ARPG fans. So that would be the hardcore PoE players, for example. That, you know, it's never going to cater to those players. It's completely different, way more casualized or casual friendly than PoE will ever be. Um, I'm not confident. I can't really speak too much between the MMO and MMORPG, but they definitely want market shares from Lost Ark. And they've already sold millions of copies. This game is definitely going to fucking boom. And we'll see how it, how it goes when it comes to longevity of it, but it's going to start off at the very tippity top of the fucking mountain. But it is an MMO ARPG game. And people need to remember that it is an MMO ARPG with an emphasis on the MMO aspect. To my understanding, right? Shake that with the prime sub. Thanks so much, dude. Welcome to the crew. Which brings me to a couple of other topics. We'll get to those because I made some notes about those as well. ARPG years will walk back to PUE and LE. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. That doesn't mean that Diablo 4 could be a great game to play at the end of a PUE league. I'm like, I, my hopes is that the gameplay will feel good on launch. I'm going to have fun on the launch. And I hope it's going to be real fun to play. I'm going to make some guides. I love doing that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to enjoy it. And I really hope that it's going to be so good in terms of longevity that I can play that at the last month of a league in PUE. So I can switch between the two games. I would love to do that if it's good enough to do so, obviously. Um, we did tackle that a little bit. Uh, so here's a really interesting, interesting topic. So they made nerfs to classes. This was very confusing to me. Very, very, very confusing. We've had access to, obviously they found some broken shit like the corpse explosion, uh, blood mist thingy. Um, they made direct nerfs to classes based off a level 25 beta test with inflated legendary drops. It is extremely confusing to me that class balances without paragons and all of that shit is done based of feedback from level 25? You level to 50 and then you get paragon points all the way to level 100 but a quarter of that was enough to dictate over half the fucking shit in the game. You didn't even get to the last points in the skill twig. That was enough to dictate uh, balance changes. Now, I understand that there was a lot of the legendary powers that were fucking broken. That's fine. But the, the patch notes that I saw, okay, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be honest, I only looked at the necromancer stuff because that's the one I've been focusing the most on, obviously. Um... I agree that there was things like uh, the necrominions. Um, they were way too tanky in the early stage. Like, I saw Don the Crown, for example. He was doing that, uh, the Bastion on the east side. And uh, he had skeletons pretty much never dying when he was under level. I think he was level 8 or something. And that dude is level 15. And he just soloed it without problems because the minions never died. Yes, that is definitely overpowered and broken. But there was no information whether or not this, these changes are only for a certain part of the game or early stage or whatever. They just say they're, they're going to die more often. Because the reason that concerns me is because everyone that's done whatever, they had some sort of end game beta test at some point. Everyone I've talked to that played Necromancer to test those things told me that the bone neck was broken in the current state of the game at, the, at that point and that um, everything else was lackluster. Minions specifically had issues with their minions dying. And then I see patch notes based on fucking feedback from a level 25 where they say the minion is going to die more often. Now, here's the interesting part. Uh, to my understanding, because someone mentioned in chat that though you're going to have to click the summon skeleton uh, uh, action, uh, the button more often, there is a function with that ability that if you have max amount of minions out and you use the ability on a corpse, it consumes a corpse, it provides what we in Path of Exile would call an offering buff, uh, a damage increase that would last five fucking seconds, by the way. And if you did that, you had to consume a corpse. And that meant to keep that buff up on your minions, you had to consume a corpse and click that button every five seconds. This is assuming you have max minions out. So if they're going to die more often and you want your minions to do damage, you're then supposed to, based on what we just read or what we saw in the, in the stream, supposed to have enough corpses to resummon minions and use... Every five seconds, make sure that you have max minions out to get the buff out for your minions as well. You're not going to do anything but resummon your minions in that case if they're going to die. Minions will be god dog shit if that's the case. But this is based on what we've been told. And it's just weird to me that, that that's the case. But then again, I'm a numbers kind of guy. I want to see numbers on it. And maybe they did just... Uh, maybe they changed the way the minion scales. So that their, their base is nerfed, but they scale better. So the higher level you get, the better their survivability damage gets. That would be a solution to this specific problem that you're in, right? That they, they presented. But that's not what they said. And that's just confusing to me. I know, I, I, I just feel like they, they specifically presented the nerfs or the balance changes, rather. They, they said, and I quote... Uh, I, I actually I can't quote exactly, but they said that it was based off the feedback they received from the beta. It, it's as if, as if uh, P, it'd be GGG would uh, balance skills based off feedback from people reaching Act 3. <laughs> I mean... I, I don't know what to say. 
I, that is so confusing to me that uh, that it's presented in that way because either they're they're mispresenting it or misrepresenting it or they're genuinely balancing the game based on feedback from a bait at level 25 thinking that is a good thing i i don't know it's so confusing that that's even a thing oh my god it could be basic never multiplies yeah that's what i said but that's not what they that's not how they presented it my problem is with how they presented it because it didn't really say anything without numbers but they did say that it was based off feedback from the uh, from the beta. And I just feel like, I don't know. It's just so weird to me. Uh, the other note that made uh, for this was the level 20 Ashava kill. So they, they're going to have this on the 12th of May. Uh, and you have two days. Um, and the max level is 20, not 25. And killing Ashava, you have to be level 25. It's level 20. Uh, you get a mount trophy because you can have like attachments, MTX transmogs, whatever you want to call it, on your mount, which is a really cool thing. I'm a big fan of those things. I love transmog stuff. I love MTX and Path of Exile. I love it in WoW, whatever. I like it. I'm, I'm a sucker for that shit. Um, so if you do a level, you get level 20 and you kill a Shava as a level 20 character, you will be provided with this fucking horn attachment. Uh, I think that's pretty cool. And uh, MP told me in chat that apparently on the 12th of May, is the same release as the sequel for Breath of the Wild Zelda game. I had no idea. <laughs> I had no idea, but I, I think I should mention that. Um, I love mounts in my MMOs too. Yeah, no, I'm a big fan of it. So here's a uh, rather interesting note that made as well that I think we should talk about. I mentioned it earlier as well. So the minimap decision, um, let's do it again for the sake of it. Anyone in chat that thinks that, the, you, do you want an overlay map consistently as if you had it in d2 or path of exile uh, you know if you want that just say yes if you don't say no let's spam up the chat i want to see it again because the last time we did it the majority said yes i want to see that again if it's that that's the case so there, there was a couple so echo saying no yeah i'm fine with playing the game consistently uh meaning can't no 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 the, you can switch between it obviously but you'll be able to switch it so the way they presented it was that your your mindset when you're playing goes from playing the game and immersing yourself in the world and actually the gameplay versus your brain is just navigating. Because I'll I'll be honest, the way I play Path of Exile, I don't look at my character. I literally don't look at my character. I am only looking at the minimap. And if there's a bunch of colors I shouldn't be standing in, I'll get the fuck out of it because that's bearers. And then I'll read a box I'll open. Then I'm looking at the map. Where am I going next? That's all I'm doing. I'm only navigating to be as effective and as fast as possible. That is a pure ARPG mindset. Diablo 4 is not a pure ARPG. It's an MMORPG. Now, originally, originally, I wanted an overlay map. 100% because I'm used to playing ARPGs that way. The last day on the second beta weekend, the last day I was streaming, I came to the conclusion that I've changed my mind. I felt like I was actually playing the game. I engaged and immersed myself in the gameplay because I didn't have an overlay map. Now, it's, it took me a long time. It took me fucking two weekends to get used to it. And I still don't like it. Let me, let me point it out because I like being effective. But that's a numbers thing, and I think that's because I've played Path of Exile for almost nine years, or nine years-ish. Um, but I do believe, and I, I, it, it, it sucks to say, but I do believe that not having an overlay map like we do in D2 or Path of Exile is a better decision for the immersion and the general enjoyment of the gameplay of the, of the actual game. Do you guys agree with that statement, or do you guys think I'm just a fucking stupid-ass cunt here? And it's supposed to be an open world as well. It's not like I play World of Warcraft with a fucking overlay, right? Not like it's not the, really the same thing, but you get the point, right? Yeah, I, I think that giving the option would be optimal. I, that would obviously be the optimal, but I know for a fact that I would always use the overlay in that case. Or at least having dungeons. Yeah, fair, fair. I mean, I would love that as well, but it would result in me only running the overlay in those situations. I would literally do that. 
And the problem with that is, is that I go, I, t I take away me actually playing the game into the mindset of just navigating. And I really like the way, what was his name? Uh, the young guy, second, second from the right, the third guy. Uh, he because he was the one who said that that your mindset just going to it goes into navigation mode instead, and that is so fucking true. It's a good way to put it. Um, I I'll be honest, just just hear me out. I was not very happy with the the information provided in most of these uh, streams. Uh, I think that the kind of information that I would like to see is um way more numerical and detailed than what we're getting, uh, and because of that. Uh, I'm not in a. Uh, I'm not very happy with the information provided, but that's because of the way I am. You got to try dark and darker. I did. I played with Dana and Skadoodle uh, last time. Actually, it was really fun. Um, what else do we have? Um, I'm confused now about what. Sorry. How people imagine the overlay of open world map? Yeah, I, I don't know. It's. I, I think that's... Good question, actually. Uh, is there a map overlay in Lost Ark? I don't remember. Because I, I leveled through everything and I did some of the endgame stuff that went on the initial launch. But, oh god, the, the cringe-worthy fucking singing bullshit midgets. Oh my god, dude. Oh, it was so bad. And this anime weeb shit, I can't stand it. I'm so happy I stopped playing that game, dude. Holy fuck. Um, they had an overlay. I, I don't even know what they were called. Moco Poco Loco or something like. Poco Loco Poco. Moco Doco Doco. Roco. Poco. Doco Soco. Toco? No. Noco. Mococo. Mococo. No, Mococo. Uh, Mococo sounds, uh, sounds familiar. That might be it. Yeah. But did that All-Stark have, uh, have an overlay? <laughs> Lucas Kaguya yeah, with the 10 months. Thanks so much, dude. Appreciate that, man. Gaz yes, they did have an overlay. Gaz okay. Kanks, Gaz Kanks, I, I like Gaz having the option, Kanks, I guess, but Gaz you definitely get into this this mode of navigation. Anyways, let's move on to the next topic. Uh, so, <laughs> the game has, uh, with the information we've seen so far, they've provided a very high or big emphasis on um, um, being casual friendly. And my concern was that there wouldn't be enough aspirational content to engage with to make it enjoyable for the longevity for the people that want to really push content, right? A quick note on that, they did talk about the battle pass. Now, obviously, I don't want to mention too much about the monetization because I'm not very happy with the fact that the game costs, you know, half a fucking house to buy. And then if you pay a little bit extra, you get access to the game a few days before the official launch, which means that the, the official launch is the 2nd of June, um, but you just gotta pay to get access, to, pay even more to get access to it. It's such a smart business model. They make so much money doing so. I just don't like it. Um, but they did say that the battle pass, uh, what was the, the speedy guy? The guy was talking so fast. I, I forgot his name. Uh, he, um, he, he answered it in such a political way that I, I am a hundred percent confident that the guy have had a career within politics before working for Blizzard. Because the question was, uh, the flash, yeah. Uh, the question was um, how long it would take to finish the battle pass. And the answer was a presidential comment saying, everyone will be able to finish it. <laughs> I'm like, what? I didn't even answer the question. Oh, man. Anyways, so uh, PvP. Let's go into that with the comment that they do have a focus on emphasis on a uh, casual friendly approach with aspirational content, which I'm very happy to hear about in the sense that in the way that they presented it. Most of it, not all of it. Uh, I was very confused and very shocked, rather, to see, to hear that they are going to allow people in PvP to have teams zerging down single players or well, solo players. I did not expect to hear that answer. Now, as a player or gamer that loves hardcore-esque approaches to games, I like this. The problem is the gaming world is not the same as it was 20 years ago. Not even close. This will cause... Like, with what they're doing is that they're creating a scenario where this type of content 
is uh, left at the mercy of the community. The problem with that nowadays in the gaming world is that that sparks a lot of toxicity, griefing, and they will obviously shape a meta. And with a meta shape, that means that if inevitably there will be certain situations, maybe certain servers, maybe certain time frames, depending on where you're living and where you're playing. I don't know how to what extent, but there will be a meta shaping. And may that be a specific t composition of players. Maybe the if the rewards are good enough, maybe you'll start seeing groups of groups teaming up to achieve this, this meta way of farming the PvP rewards. I don't know, but these things are very likely to happen. And that is at the mercy of the community. And that is a really cool thing when it, the game is very small, because that's very community building. I remember Path of Exile five, six years ago was very good on that sense. But as the game grows, or is at the size of Diablo and Blizzard right now, it's more likely to be on the toxic end. Now, I don't mind PvP because it's supposed to be gruesome and it's supposed to be this really infected, you know, slaughter field. I like the approach of it, uh, but I'm not sure if someone who isn't a hardcore fan of these, these things will enjoy it. But then again, so was PvP D2 as well. Uh, so, I don't know, it, it, there's pros and cons. I personally like it. What do you guys in chat say? Yes or no, do you guys think that the uh, PvP, the way they portrayed it, is good that they're doing this? Or would you have rather have uh, this zone instance or shard or whatever you want to call it is only for par people in parties and this one is only for solo players? What would you guys prefer? I genuinely think that most people don't even care about the PvP, so I guess it's uh, kind of a stupid question, but I I'd rather ask, see what you guys say. Instance, too. If you lose players, I'm in. You lose shards, MVP. Don't care. No. 20 bedrooms with 45 over power surging. Yeah. Full loot PvP. I mean, we've played games with full loot PvP, such as um, V Rising, for example. Uh, but that's a different kind of game. In a full loot PvP server in V Rising, what would happen there is that if they, if one team got a head start, they were miles ahead of everyone else, and it went so fast, so so fast, in full loot PvP that way. Um, so that's a different thing. That's a completely different kind of game. To my understanding, there's not supposed to be any. I'll take it back. There's not supposed to be any pay to win, but there is. If you pay, you can speed through the battle pass faster. And I don't know if the battle pass is giving you any powers. To my understanding, it was supposed to only be MTXs or whatnot. Can someone correct me if I'm wrong there? It's MTX only. So in that case, it doesn't matter. It's just a pay to pay to get the free the uh, the non-power improving MTX is faster. I don't mind that. I think that's really cool. Depends on the weight of how good uh, the loot is versus the PvE loot. If you have a uh, situation, PvE, PvP, PvP. Oh, no one does PvP, PvP, PvE becomes toxic. Oh, yeah. Like, if, if this gear is from PvP, there's definitely going to be a meta shaping, for sure. And that might also turn into the situation where people are, like, really toxic. You have a group of people more or less controlling the shit, and they, they will then have all of those items and then selling them, so to say. I'm just presenting a scenario that could happen if that's the case, but... I don't think that's something we need to worry about too much um, without seeing it. Like, why why stress or worry or be concerned or something we don't know. But I'm just saying that the decisions they made have these possible outcomes, and that should be uh, kept in mind when talking about the list. How is that pay to win other than four days head start? I think the four days head start is pretty crazy. Um, launches are always fun to play. Either way, that's a different topic. Uh, I, I just don't like the business practice uh that they're doing so because it's really smart hey i'm gonna sell you a full product and which we're gonna sell for a fuckload more money than um than any other game in the, in the fucking history of world gaming let's just uh charge you a stupid amount of money for the game but if you add another what it was twenty dollars or thirty dollars whatever i don't even remember how much it was ten dollars if you pay a little bit more money than we're already charging, you get access four days before everyone else. The result is obviously the majority will buy the fucking extra shit and play it on four days early. It's such such a smart business move. They make so much money out of it. I just hate it. I don't hate that they make money. I just hate that. I don't know. You, you get what I mean. 
30 percent more for four days early yeah jesus he's only supposed to start like two weeks after launch right we will see the how the four days matter i think that it, i don't think it matters too much but you want to be there and launch and experience things right that's kind of a thing you hate that it's predatory that's the word i was looking for thank you sorry i'm, I'm a bit tired i hate that it's predatory for sure um no absolutely i i would say so um but probably so many people will do that. It won't matter for game progression purposes. Well, okay. So put it this way. Um, from my personal perspective, because everyone to each their own, right? From my perspective, I am a content creator that have a pl I have a platform in which I am showcasing and promoting content. That includes Path of Exile mostly. Some sponsors. We have a sponsor tomorrow, by the way. We'll talk about that later today. Um, and we have one later this month as well, actually, that I'm very excited about. Um, anyways, and I promote those things to the community, right? And I hate the predatory business practice that you pay extra money to get access to 40s early. I, I just hate it. So if I wasn't a streamer or content creator, I would not buy that pack because I want to vote with my wallet. Now, as a content creator, me starting four days later, fuck that. Fuck that. On launch, 2nd of June, I will be playing with Don the Crown and two other streamers, and we will go ham. And if it's humanly possible to get max level in one sitting, we will do that. We will literally do that if it's possible. I don't even know how long it's going to take. We will do PUE League Launch Degen Race fucking schedule. So if it's possible to do that in one sitting, we will. That's what I'll be doing for a variety of reasons. One, I love doing it. Similar to like WoW releases. I love the launches. I want to max level in the fucking first day. I love doing it. And then we sit doing nothing for two weeks because I'm already max geared and free biz geared. It's because I love that race feeling. I enjoy that. And as a content creator, it also means I can then get content out, which is directly connected to uh, my livelihood. And I got a fucking baby to take care of nowadays. Um, which means I have to swallow my pride and accept the fact that because of my occupational hazard, I have to support a predatory practice that I don't approve of. That's my personal opinion on it. But I, wanna, I want that to be very perfectly clear because I'm very open and transparent with the way I do things here on stream. Everything I do, I'm very open with and completely transparent with these things. That is my opinion. I don't like it. I feel forced to. And I have a, I have a business to take care of and therefore I will have to do this. But I want to be perfectly clear that I don't like it. And if I wasn't a streamer, I would not purchase the... I don't like it! It's action. shit! It's got to get you're losing money by not paying extra salary. Yeah, but then again, the expense is a business expense, obviously, so it's a write-off, but it has less to do with it. It's more about the supporting the predatory practice, in my opinion. Anyways, uh, moving on. Uh, that was a little bit of a tangent. Um, so this one confused me a lot. I can't even fucking operate. What the fuck? Let me move it? Thank you. Uh, this one was very confusing to me. Um... So I, I mentioned it earlier how some of the problems they presented was that they told they basically told uh, told you told us that um, the game has cancer and uh, this is a bad thing we're gonna fix the cancer by putting a band aid on the shoulder and last time I checked and believe me I checked band aids don't cure cancer. That's how I felt about it. So the core problem didn't fix it. It was basically just making it look a little better. And I don't think that is a... I, I don't know. That's just how it felt. Does anyone agree that that's how it felt? An example of this to get you to understand my my uh, what I'm trying to say was the dungeon reset. Now, I, I, I agree and I understand the whole thing with the hardcore that they could just save themselves from resetting the dungeon. I get that. But... What's the, what's the, why not just not have it be able to be used inside the dungeon and you can reset the dungeon when everyone's outside? Instead, you have to wait for 60 seconds. I don't know how this is going to be implemented, but it's to my understanding and what I'm expecting to see is that you're supposed to wait 
these 60 seconds when everyone's exited the dungeon. And if anyone enters the dungeon before that timer has gone, they will reset the reset timer. Because they reopen the same old area. Everyone has to go out and wait another 60 seconds. Which is fucking annoying. There are other solutions to these things. If the, the, because it because of the reset, natural reset, it doesn't seem like they think it's a problem that people are farming the dungeons. Because the aspirational endgame where the best gear is, that stuff is requiring you to invest currency of different types to do the nightmare dungeons. So you're not doing that, doing a quick farm route, going out resetting it, right? Maybe you will, but that's that's my understanding, at least. This is exclusively for either leveling faster in dungeons, maybe that works, or to farm a gear in non-nightmare dungeons, which is not even this gear, so that seems to not be a problem. So I, like, what's the actual problem? If the problem was the hardcore logout, why not just make it so you can only use it when you're outside the dungeon? The problem solved. Or whatever, right? Or, I don't know, make it a cast time or something. It just makes it, it just sounded weird to me that they present this so-called problem and then the the solution is awkward because it causes uh it causes a um I, I'm finding it hard to find words to describe what they cause, but um it would be it would be very frustrating if I am deciding to farm dungeons with a party. And we're going to farm a specific dungeon. And every time we're done with the dungeon, we go out of the dungeon. And then we're waiting for it to reset. We're just sitting there, rolling our thumbs, you know, beating him, beating our meat. And then we say, oh, I think the timer's gone. We can go in. We go inside, and it's the old dungeon because we went in too fast. Everyone has to go out. We have to wait another 60 seconds before we can do it again. It's just, it's frustrating. Like, I'm, I'm already frustrated over that happening. Because I know it will happen. So the problem they presented was solved solved in a way that causes frustrating moments. This was just one of the examples. Do you guys agree with what I'm saying? Or do you think that I'm just being I don't know, hyperbolic? But maybe do you think I feel like I'm too much of an elitist or speed gamer when it comes to or one percenter when it comes to like just wanting to speed it? Or do you guys actually agree with what I'm saying? Or trying to say rather, I don't like it. It's so what you have one of your recommendation. How do you like it? You don't agree. The killjoy, you killjoy, you never agree with me, anyways. Artificially wasting players' time, potentially wasting players' time. But then again, it might not be worth farming dungeons. But I'm just saying that that possibility now has a factor of uh, frustration involved or potential frustration. For what reason? If the only problem was hardcore players resetting dungeons to save themselves, just make it not use inside dungeons or make it a cast time or you know, whatever the fuck, right? There's so many, so many other solutions that would have solved the actual problem without causing other problems. And I'll be honest, like GGG does that very well. They make many changes, not all, many changes that GGG does. Have in mind the ripple effect that a change has on other things than what they're trying to solve. They're not always hitting, the, hitting it on the spot. But in most cases, they're actually very good at looking at what the change impacts further down the road, outside of what they're trying to fix. And I think that's really good. And I didn't feel like that kind of quality of changes is what we, we've heard from Diablo 4 so far. Same thing with the balance sheet is based on feedback on the level 25 character in beta. I mean, but again, like we say, we don't know the numbers, so it's hard to tell, right? Will slower resets really be a problem, though, uh, when the end game is to run sigils for dungeons? No, it's not about that, oh, Ignod. It's, um, it's about the fact that if you're leveling and you want to farm a specific item or whatever in an, or in an area before you're doing these sigil stuffs, that can now cause a frustrating moment. They've presented us with a mechanic in the game that have the possibility, a very high possibility, to cause frustration for no reason whatsoever. 
I'm not saying that this is going to be a problem. I'm saying that they are creating the possibility of it out of nothing. And I just feel like that is such a stupid solution because they looked at a problem and be like, yeah, let's just do this instead. Not seeing the effects of that change potentially causing issues in on other aspects. And the, I think the biggest problem with that is that if they do that now, since they've done that with this way, what's stopping them from doing this with other things? Oh, that specific X build is too strong because of Y ability. We're going to change the way that ability works drastically. Suddenly, they might have killed six different type of builds. Because they, their focus was just fixing that specific issue, not giving a fuck how that would affect the other things around it. Does that make sense? Their mindset in these fixes is my problem. Not thinking about the uh, ripple effect of what changes do. Because that's how it sounded to me. Maybe, maybe I'm just um, overly concerned about it. I don't know. But does, does that make sense? The way I'm trying to portray what I'm trying to say. <laughs> this is really hard to explain what I'm trying to say. Jesus. Does a slower reason really be a problem though? And the end game is... i uh, sorry, I read that. The funny thing is also if you leave a partial dungeon, you have to think they said 150 seconds to rejoin or reset. It's like you have a full inventory, TP to town, get distracted, and could have a situation where the dungeon resets unintentionally. Also true. Literally put in a mechanic where different monsters drop certain base and whatever. That's a good thing we could talk about. Uh, target um, farming. Someone in chat, I don't remember who it was. Maybe you can say hi when, when I talk about this. Someone in chat said that they like target farming as long as the item that you can target farm also can drop elsewhere. I don't agree with that personally. I can see the perks of it and I don't mind it. I just don't like it, but it's a it's a personal thing. Either way, even if that's the case, I still like that you can drop anything anywhere. But the fact that if you're looking for a specific item, it's not like you're gonna run around, uh, you know, farming a uh, shako, for example, because they, they mentioned that item, right? So let's say they want to farm a shako, and you just gotta be lucky, or you're gonna have to drop something valuable to trade for it. If it's not gonna be valuable, we don't know, right? That sucks. But knowing that there are ways for you to literally target farm. So let's take some examples for that. There's two direct examples they mentioned. Helltide, where you farm the coins to look to open the helmet caches. That is one way of increasing the probability of you finding the item that you're actually hunting for. That is a way for you to feel like you're actually having a proper objective to do something with the time you're investing into the game with a direct goal connected to it. The other way was that we will eventually find out uh, which type of archetypes or group of enemies that drop specific items out as a bonus, potential bonus drop outside of the, the normal drops. Some monster drop in a crossbow, for example. So there are ways to target farm. I absolutely love that. I think Last Epoch does this very, very, very well in the way that certain items can be directly target farm. So I'm like, okay, I need this to make my build work or be better or improve my build. I will then have to farm that or that or that area to improve it. And I feel like my time invested is not just spinning the slot machine, streaming on kick, hoping to win a couple of million dollars in Bitcoins. Now, I'm instead looking at a situation where I'm spending my time in this and I know that eventually I will get it because I've increased my best probability of getting what I'm looking for is through this beat, the, uh, this type of... Um, um, Jesus, my, my words are slipping out of my... <laughs> disappearing uh, to engage with that type of farming strategy. I like that because it feels good. Even if I don't drop it, it feels like I have done what I could to increase the probability of it. I don't know, that, that target farming in the RPGs has always been something I've been praising. Always. So, uh, with that stated, from my perspective, what does the chat say? Do you guys think that the target farming that Diablo 4 has presented us is seemingly, because we haven't played it, seemingly based on what we know, 
Is it good or not, according to you guys? I want to see what the chat has to say. It seems to suck. Seemingly good. Name of the song. Uh, that was Grey King by The Wise Man's Fear. He's better than PUE. Well, PUE is different. It's a purebred ARPG game. PUE is amazing. Di very different games. There are target farming in PUE as well, for that matter. I like target farming. Or like person commented with low chance to drop bells, where so if doing something else might get lucky and get what I wanted. Yeah. So you don't feel you're not um, punished for doing something else. That's something Last Epoch is. If you need the low life boots, for example, in Lost Last Epoch, you farm the Frost Death and whatever the fuck it's called area. But if you farm something else, you will never drop those boots because they have a 50% drop chance from the boss in that area. And you want them with good rolls, you have to farm it. It takes some while to get to the boss, right? So that's another example of if you want that, you have to do that. That is direct, ex direct, exclusive target farming. But in this case, it's just you can target farm it by increasing the probability for you to drop what you're looking for. But you're not, you don't, you're not forced to do it. It's just that you have now been presented with the option to. I think it would be shit if there was a way to specifically target farm Shaker, but I'm fine to hire the chance with target farming heads. I like the way it's been presented, but again, it, it's really hard for us to say, oh, I like this, so oh, I like that, or this is good, this is bad without playing it. And again, for me, for example, I do lack some information regarding the Paragon so far. I've just been doing some generic read-up, and uh, I do need to get the last details of it to be able to make proper statements of it. But uh, based on what I know and what I've seen and what I've heard and what we heard today, um, I think that that seems good. But again, it might turn to shit. Just look at Path of Exile, the Crucible League that we're in right now in Path of Exile. The, the League mechanic, dog shit. Like, terrible. I was hoping they were going to make a proper rework out of it. The result of the skill trees on weapons and shield in PvE right now, amazing. I really hope they're going to make that a core mechanic. It's such a good thing for the game. I love it. I really do. It's crazy cool. Everything else around the mechanic could have been so much better. So that's that's kind of like where where my position is when it comes to things like it. Because when the league release, the, when we got the announcement for PvE Crucible, for example, I loved it, and then we got to play it, and it was like no. No, right? So without playing it, we can only make assumptions of based on what we know so far. And I can't lie, thanks so much for the raid. Appreciate it. Welcome in, welcome in. Hope you guys are doing well. Thank you, thank you. You target farm for eight hours. Maybe this isn't a game for you. <laughs> I like weapon trees, hate crucibles. He's like, lastly, I like the Rolex. That's fair. Uh, is there anything else that we should bring up when it comes to uh, Diablo 4 so far? Anything else you guys feel like we should mention? I just made a couple notes. I don't think that was most of the notes. Yeah, that was all the notes I made. That stood out the most, at least. Anything else you guys think we should bring up? About the keybinds? They did change it so that we could loot with left click. Thank fuck for that, dude. Jesus. Don't pay $70 like garbage. To each their own. I found myself having surprising amount of fun playing the betas. So I'm actually looking forward to the launch of this, and I just hope that the actual game will deliver. Then again, I also know that I will be speeding my ass off in the launch, so I'm going to skip everything. So I'm going to have to make another character afterwards to actually you know, go through the lore and everything. <laughs> because the first thing I will be doing is bum-rushing the end game, because that's how I play the game, these type of games. Is there anything about trading? Will there be auction house? Uh, no, they didn't mention anything of that, right? There will be trading, but no, no mention of auction house to my understanding, right? Can someone correct me if I'm wrong there? I'm paying a dime more than the million now. I think that's fair. I just want Necro to be decent enough to play all the way through that's all. I do want to mention something that was a concern of mine uh, when it comes to the balance changes. We saw the Necro minions. Uh, they wanted Necros to utilize more corpses. It, it, to me, like I talked about it earlier, it's weird to me that you're expected to use the summon skeleton sk uh, skill, for example, multiple times over. Because the, the buff duration of when you have a max amount of minions you use it and consume a corpse lasts five fucking seconds. Not to mention that your minions have to move up or get in range to attack your enemies. 
and then they do damage, and now they're gonna die, you have to generate corpses, resummon them. Theoretically, based on that information, the gameplay will make DPS from Necromancer go like this. Oh, you have damage, damage, damage. Oh, your minion's dead. You gotta resummon them. Oh, now we do damage, damage, damage. Oh, they're dead again. Whereas the vast majority of other non-minion -min builds, oh, sorry, they're calling it pet builds. In it's called minion builds. Fucking learn it, please. Um, so those type of uh, non-minion builds would then be in a position where the damage that they are doing would not bounce like this, because it's more like resource management. So it would be more like this, right? Oh, the big buff or a big cooldown, like this. Whereas minions are like, hey, you have your damage, and then yo, your army's dead. You gotta resummon everything to build it slowly back up again. I don't know. But again, we don't know because maybe the scaling of them is fine and they'll be perfectly fine with some decent gears. We don't know these changes. It's hard to tell without the information. Pet is something to keep at home. You don't keep skeletons at home. Are you sure? I learned the bright side. People make the biggest issues uh, of very minor things. If you're going to complain, at least do it with a big issue. I think everyone is entitled to their own opinions, as long as it's presented in a civil and mature way. They said there will be only 30 or so Nightmare Dodgers, right? I actually don't know how many. Uh, it feels kind of weird since the only thing that will be different from normal versions is a couple of affixes slapped on them. I don't know. Without playtesting, it's, it's really hard to give feedback on it. We can only assume, right? Yeah, I, I noticed, Kyle. Thank you. Um, I just want Necro to be decent enough to play all the way through. I mean, to my understanding, Necromancer have some pretty... Well, I've been looking through the skill tree planner and the data mined information with the, some of the legendary aspects and uh, stuff like that. Necromancer... I'm, I'm going to make a lot of different uh, Necromancer builds. Let me put it that way. And uh, Bone Build and the Blood Build are the two that looks the dopest right now. Uh, there's a couple cool things with the uh, corpses generating bone spirit and stuff like that. Uh, the Dawn the Crown sent me some from the data mine as well. It's pretty fucking awesome. It's going to be fun to see that as well. Uh, but impossible to tell till we uh, play test it, right? So we'll see. That's says far better things to improve over 30 second delay. But okay, but I don't think you. Okay. I don't, th I don't think you listened to what I was saying when I said that this was a problem. I'm, I'm going to mention it again. I paused the music. So when I said that this was a problem, um, I'm going to try to explain this in a better way uh, so it, it, it doesn't come across as futile or irrelevant. So they, they have now presented us with a problem. Um, the problem is that the recent dungeon in this example is able to bypass the deaths of hardcore characters. One way or another. Whatever the fuck that was. And that's a problem. Instead of just making it not be able to reset unless you're outside of the dungeon, the solution was to create another... that potentially created a frustrating problem in another sense. Now, it's a very minor one, but it can definitely happen. I can definitely see myself engaging with this and being fucking angry at it. The problem with this is that they have shown us that their mindset, whether balance changes or fixing problems, is completely disregarding the possibility of causing frustrating situations or nuisances or problems in the game on other aspects with their solution. That is what they're showing us with this type of solution to a problem they presented. That is my problem. So another example, a hyperbolic example I took was that if there's an ability that is completely overpowered mechanically, and they say, hey, we're going to fix that because that bill is too insane, and we will change the way that ability works drastically to fix that problem. By then totally disregarding other impacts that it might have, such a change could completely kill tons of other problems or tons of other builds, as a hyperbolic example. That is what they're showing us that they're doing with this type of change. And maybe I'm exaggerating, but that is the concern I see when they told me, when they said that the solution to this problem was that. That is what I was trying to say. The, I don't really care that much about this. It's just that there is a frustrating possibility that is caused by this so called solution. And this wouldn't happen if they thought about the possibility of this happening. 
with their solution. Does that make sense? Or like, am I still trying? Are people understanding where I'm getting at or trying to say? I'm trying my best here, man. I'm trying my best here. But that was my uh, my take on that, at least. You lost me at a low? I'm sorry. Can you repeat? No. No, I can't. I can't. Uh, is there anything else you guys think we should talk about in D4, then? Again, about other games uh, do the same thing, so kind of used to it. That's not an excuse. It's still a valid concern, though. Even no matter what other games do. The problem was hardcore carriers resetting to save themselves. The third the delay fixes that by screwing everyone else. Yeah, but that that's that's the problem, right? That they're disregarding that it's screwing everyone else, right? Even a hyperbolic example. Oh man, uh, I think that kind of covered it. Um, I think that's covered it. No one else has anything else we think uh, we should talk about. Any questions you guys have, or anything you want me to uh, spill my two cents on? I think that covers um, Diablo 4 for us, then. I guess we're going to move back to um, to Path of Exile, then, I guess.